them into the final tonight. It's not been a problem for Manchester City of late, and they've been in incredible form away from home. They lost their first two games of the season. They've won all eight in all competitions on their travels since then. So formidable opposition in the way of Arsenal tonight at Boreham Wood, where Arsenal play the majority of their home games. This for the second season in succession. And before the action again, players, officials and coaches take a knee to reinforce the message that there is no room for discrimination in football or society. So it's Caitlin Ford getting the game underway. My audition. The first half unfolded and probably the best chance of it came just five minutes in. Laura Weinreuter, maybe too much time to think about it, trying to drive it low into the bottom corner, but too close to Sandy McKeever, who was able to make the save. City had plenty of possession in the first half of the first half. They did have the odd chance as well. Nice piece of improvisation by Hemp there, but just unable to lift it up high enough to get it over the head of Sabrina D'Angelo, who hasn't had much to do in the first half. City then continuing to ask questions. That was Chloe Kelly's effort, which was gobbled up by D'Angelo, and a good job it was too, because Hemp was ready to pounce on any potential loose ball. Kelly having scored her first league goal of the season with a bit of confidence in her shooting ability again. Hemp really has given Arsenal plenty to think about in the first half. Here she teed up Philippa Angeldahl. We would have hoped to have at least forced a save from D'Angelo there. Had plenty of time to measure the shot after Hasegawa had left it to her. Felt like it was pretty even in terms of chances in the first half, but looking back at this, really City have had more, if maybe not as clear-cut. That was a really difficult one for Bunny Shaw, trying to hook the ball over her shoulder and into the net from Hemp's cross. Another example there of how difficult Arsenal have found it to contain Lauren Hemp. Her here, and it came to Kelly, and Kelly's shot was wild. But I'm sure one of the instructions from Gareth Taylor will be to get the ball to Lauren Hemp as much as possible in the second half, because she's making life very difficult indeed. Couple of opportunities for Arsenal before the break as well. Williamson playing in defence tonight, playing that one forward to Cool, and then it came to Caitlin Ford, and she couldn't keep it down. Picked as the spearhead of the Arsenal attack tonight, the Australian. She has had the odd opportunity. So that was it for the first half. We'll be back with the second half shortly. Well, let's see how the game unfolded. And really, Arsenal should have been ahead with just a couple of minutes on the clock. Laura Weinrother with a brilliant chance. But the shot was far too close to Sandy McKeever. So many chances. Incredible. There was only one goal and we needed more than 120 minutes to find it. City had several opportunities of their own. That was Chloe Kelly in the first half going close for the visitors. And then after the restart, Bunny Shaw, who had to make opportunities for herself because she didn't get the kind of service that she was looking for, firing just over here. Frustrating night for Shaw. Peter McCabe, the player of the match. How about this for a pinch of a cross? Really should have resulted in the goal for Lena Hertig, but her effort thundered back off the crossbar when it looked easier to score. And you wondered at this point if it was going to be a night of immense frustration for Arsenal. Hurtig again with a golden opportunity to score. She will be extremely relieved that her team have got through because these were two chances which should have been converted, particularly that one. McCabe again with an excellent delivery here. Merkiva dropped it and uh, Blackstenius couldn't turn it in. Relief for the City goalkeeper there. Blackstenia should have scored, but it didn't matter because she would do later. And then this was the moment that won the match. Two minutes into extra time, Steeler Blackstenius through McKeever, who, looking at that again, might be disappointed that she didn't manage to keep it out. It was good work from Marnham and Hertig in the build-up. And Blackstenius there to apply the finishing touch and get the goal that ultimately would take Arsenal through to the final. 
great play from Marnham. And then unselfish from her to, to square it back to Blackstenius. City responded pretty well. They could even have had an equaliser straight afterwards. So as the substitute Hayley Rasso could have cut that back for sure, but felt that she could score herself. It was a good save from D'Angelo, who played well in the Arsenal goal. City pressed and pressed, but they just couldn't find the equalising goal they craved. D'Angelo equal to everything that they threw at her. Again, City kept pressing, but just no goal for them. It's so rare that they failed to score. That one just over Shaw's head and at the back post, Rasso couldn't turn it in. And that was that. Arsenal managed to hold on, and it's they who go through to the final. That's it. Arsenal are through to the Conti Cup final for 2023. They needed extra time to get past Manchester City, but Stina Blackstenius is the match.